What do you know about symmetry? Chances are you see symmetry as being an attribute. You either have symmetry or you don't. For example, let's take a look at the square. We would say that the square is symmetric in that you can draw a line right through its center vertically like this and then it will be the same on both sides. This is a, probably the way you learned symmetry in school and it's a, it's a static version of symmetry. Mathematicians see symmetry not so much as an attribute, but as a transformation, something that you do, something that, a change that you make. For example, let's go back to the square. If I said to you, uh, I'm going to make a change to the square, tell me what I did, and after I made the change it looked exactly like this, what could I have done to it? Well, um, you might say, well, you did nothing to it, and that's a possibility. I could have just left it alone. That's an option, just like adding zero is an option. You still get the same number. But if I did something else other than just leaving it alone, what could that have been? Well, I might have rotated it. Well, if I rotated this much, that wouldn't be enough because now it looks different. But if I rotated a quarter turn or 90 degrees, then that would work. It still looks the same. Or if I rotate it in the other direction, this was clockwise. If I do it counterclockwise, that would be maybe negative 90 degrees or negative a quarter turn, positive quarter turn. Or I could rotate it twice. It still looks the same. I could also flip it or reflect it. I could do this to it. So all those things that I can do that leave the square looking unchanged are the symmetries of the square. And how many of those symmetries are unique? One way to keep track of the different transformations that we can do to a square and still keep it looking the same is to label the vertices so that when I rotate it, I can see that it changed from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 4, 1, 2, 3. So this is a way to keep track of the different um, transformations to see that we're not repeating them. So with the square, if I'm rotating, then I can start with this and I can say, okay, uh, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. If I did it again, I would get this one. And again, I get this one. And again, I get this one. But now we're back to where we started. So there's four different ways that I can rotate this. No matter how many times I rotate it, in the end, I'm going to get one of these four positions. Either I would have this one, this one, this one, or this one. So these are four symmetries of the square. And you can identify them as saying rotate 90, rotate 180, rotate 270 degrees. Or you could just say the number of the vertices. So one, two, three, four. So that's actually, that's rotate zero. Nothing happened to it. What about reflections? Well, I could reflect it this way. That would give me two, one, four, three. I could reflect it this way, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I could also reflect it across this diagonal and just flip it like this. So we get 3, 2, 1, 4. Or I could do it this way. 1, 4, 3, 2. And back again. So there are four different arrangements of those vertices. So if you want to engage young children with this, then using a square like this, labeling the vertices, they can keep track of the different rotations and reflections and uh, see which ones are unique and which ones are not.